Welcome, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar, which is titled How Technology Gets Things Done in the Boardroom. My name is Sean McDonald, and I'll be your moderator for the next 45 minutes. Firstly, thanks for attending today. We really appreciate the effort you've made to be here. And during our session, if you have any questions, please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen and not the chat, because it allows us to see all the threads. We'll be answering as many of these as we have time for and get through as many of the questions as we have time for as we go along. And finally, if you have, if you stay, sorry, through till the end of the webinar, which we hope you'll do and is customary for our webinars, we have a special treat for you. By answering our really short one minute survey at the end of the webinar, you'll go into our draw to win a beautiful gift hamper worth over $400. Now, for those that don't know Board Pro, we are a board software provider that serve around about 20,000 users around the globe. We enable organizations to prepare for and run their board meetings more effectively with clever software, of course, with less time and deliver more impact and value for the organization. And as much as we're a board software provider, part of our wider mission is to make the fundamentals of governance free and easy to implement for all organizations especially those with resource constraints. So let me today introduce our expert panel, starting with Kim Thibault. Kim has overseen the development of BoardPro as co-founder and CPO, growing BoardPro from the startup to where it is today. She currently leads the BoardPro product team and is driven by a passion to solve the problems that face the modern governance community for small businesses and nonprofits. And as someone who actually sits on a board herself and reports to a board, Kim is bringing to life an easier way to do governance, no matter someone's governance experience or technology skill set. So welcome today to you, Kim. Thank you, Sean. Zeeshan Bhatti is a seasoned product professional with over a decade of experience in the tech industry. As head of product growth at BoardPro, Zeeshan leads the development and execution of the company's growth strategy. Zeeshan holds a PhD in electrical engineering and has a long history of working with innovative and cutting edge technology. He made significant contributions to the early development of BoardPro, particularly in the area of document generation and handling capabilities. Welcome to you, Zeeshan. Thank you so much. And finally, last but by no means least, we have Danika Palowski. She's an experienced and award-winning company secretary with experience in legal and health financial services. Danika is a chartered member of the Institute of Directors and sits on the board of Takapuna School and is the founder and director of Board Administration Services. Welcome, Danika. Thank you, Sean, and kia ora koutou, everyone. Okay, we're going to start by having a quick poll. So let me just go into my poll questions. Just to get a measure on everybody in the audience today, if you could just quickly answer those, answer that one question that comes up on your screen, we'll move on. Can you see that on there, Kim? Yes, yep, we can see it, Sean. Marvellous. Time for strategic thinking. That's a big one. That's interesting. Seems to be the seems to be the top topic. Time for strategic thinking in business. Okay, thanks for that. I'm just going to take a screenshot of that. Excellent. We end that poll. All right. Let's move on to the topic itself. Kim, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you, Sean. So today's topic on how technology gets things done in the boardroom. So this is actually really a personal favorite topic of mine, as it was the lack of good technology to help with board governance that was one of the catalysts for starting BoardPro. Several years ago, I chaired a small finance committee for a nonprofit organization here in Auckland, and I found so much time was being taken up with just the basic things of getting ready for the meeting, taking the minutes, distributing them afterwards. It was disproportionate, and I kept thinking, surely there's some technology that can help make this easier. And at the time, Brett and I were pivoting from leader kits and we were starting board pro and this was one of the catalysts for it was how can technology actually 
do some of the heavy lifting for getting good governance done. And we know governance is the system by which organizations are directed, overseen, and held accountable for their purpose. And good governance is the foundation for fulfilling the purpose of an organization. And technology can go quite a ways, especially as you mentioned earlier, Sean, for organizations that have got resource constraints. Particularly, we were looking at small businesses and nonprofits and the challenges they face in executing good governance. So board meetings have certainly changed over the years. Uh, Zishan, prior to starting with BoardPro, you actually sat on a number of boards, including from some of your own startups. Tell us what governance was like five years ago. Thank you for that question, Kim. Actually, five years was not too long ago. We had mobile devices, we had iPads, we had high-speed internet but it felt like there was something missing. There was always some technology that was giving you some grief. In my board, as well as the other board that I have interacted with, I have seen this one specific trend that your board was considered, your boardroom was considered very futuristic if you had a very advanced projector. Even though you had all this technology, nobody was putting it to use. Yeah. I have witnessed people bringing in their USBs at the last, last minute. And if your projector had a USB slot, it was just considered a blessing that our technology saved the day. But I have basically just seen this, that people were bringing printouts. I have very rarely seen anyone bring a laptop in. And if he did, he felt like he was just disconnected from the room because he was looking at a screen. And there was this hunk of plastic in the middle of the table. We used that for conference calls. And uh, yeah, that was my experience when I reflect back five years ago. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it seems like it wasn't that long ago that pen and paper were bleeding edge technology around the board table. You used it around quite a few board tables. Can you tell us about how attitudes towards technology have been changing recently and particularly yeah. observed anything pre and post pandemic? Absolutely. When I first started in my role, we printed packs, we printed board packs, and I had to actually go and bind them on a binder. And wow. it was a nightmare if you ever had late editions or any changes to papers at the last minute, because you'd have to go and reprint them and rebind them. I've found directors' attitudes towards moving towards digital platforms has been, it's a slow uptake. People are reticent to change. And I think I've seen often where we've got digital software people still, not everyone, but some people still like to have a printed board pack, which is just, it creates its own issues because if you have any late changes, again, it's updated in real time online and everyone that's using the online platform can see that. But the people that come to the meeting with a pack that they'd printed three days ago won't have those changes and they put themselves at a disadvantage because they're on the back foot when everyone else is discussing the new changes and they haven't seen mm. them. So I do have to do a lot of encouragement to help to, to encourage people to actually just uptake the, the digital aspect of their papers because the printing is just, it's, it's a bit antiquated now, I think. And certainly through COVID, it helped to force that change. People were at home and they didn't necessarily have printers or they had little home printers but couldn't print a 200-page board pack. And so they had to start using their devices. And I think that just it destigmatized it for them. So it wasn't so scary. So certainly post-COVID, I think a lot more people use digital devices for their papers in real time. Okay, that's great. All right, let's move on and start talking about what are some of the challenges of governance before there was technology to, to help with deal with some of these changes? So here we've got four classic types of pain points that any organization can hold. So let's take a look at financial pain points first. As we know, time is money. For an organization, whether you're nonprofit or commercial, time is money. And Preparing for a meeting is quite, can be quite expensive for the organization. We've got executives, we've got the administrators getting ready for the meeting, preparing reports for the meeting, thinking about what needs to be talked about. Usually the chief executive is involved in the chair with setting the agenda for the meeting and thinking what outcomes they want. But sometimes we forget how much time it takes actually for the board members to prepare for the meeting. So they need to get the information in a reasonable period of time so they can read it over and think about it. 
And when we were researching Board Pro, one director told us about his frustration. Predictably, the night before a board meeting, he would receive an email. The agenda was written in text in the body of the email, and there were seven attachments, and he had to try to figure out which attachment went with which, which agenda item. Recording in progress. Of course, there's travel and accommodation costs when you have in-person meetings. If you have board members who are live in another part of the country, they have to travel in and be hosted as well. And then the resources for paper board packs, when they used to be couriered out, that was always expensive. And how to handle late updates was always a challenge. And the administration cost of people supporting and administering the board. Danika, you've talked a little bit about some of the work that's involved. Is there anything else you'd add to some of these financial costs of supporting a board? Yeah, I mean, I think certainly when you are not using a digital platform, you're paying for an administrator's time to, to print or to PDF, combine documents, put links in, mail them out. It's actually quite a time intensive process and time costs money. So you're always looking at that. It's the time it takes to upload a board pack when you're using board software is so much easier. It's so much faster. It's a much simpler process and it takes much less time. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you. So moving on to productivity pain points. So Zishan, talk about information portability. What does that actually mean? So information portability is people no longer want to be tied to their devices. They want to work from home, work from office, work from a beach or work overseas, they don't no longer want to be tied to one particular device that they have to carry everywhere. The In the pre-older days, several years ago, the manual version of this was to print out your board packs and put them in a luggage and then have extra luggage cost when you're traveling overseas and then lug it around wherever you're going. A board pack would very easily be a few hundred pages. And if you are carrying around a few board packs from a few meetings or a few organizations, that's easily several kilos that you have to lug around. Yeah. A better version was a USB drive that you would have to carry around, but there was a huge security risk. If you lose the USB, you would be leaking a lot of confidential information. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what I have previously seen people actually do when they were trying to move the information with them. Yeah. That's great, thank you. And another challenge for productivity is of course, the simple number of applications that particularly executive teams need to use to preparing and supporting the board. You've got financial applications, office applications. There's quite a, quite a large number of applications to work with and to deal with. And when you're trying to use some of those for preparing for the board meeting, it can be quite a bit of overhead for the administrator. And Board members, in the past, when there were paper board packs, they would often make little notes in the margin of the board pack as they were reading it. These notes would often be the questions they might want to raise during the board meeting or some of their own thoughts in process. Tell us, Zishan, how that happens today with the digital board pack. How do people make their notes? And what happens when there's a late update? People have actually moved towards more digital devices using their mobile devices such as an iPad to take annotations or notes directly on a PDF version of their board pack. Mm -hmm. And now that has solved several problems, but it has created more problems such as with late, board, late files, late documents, board packs that get, get updated at a later stage. A few solutions to that I have seen is people actually now either carry a diary where they're noting down their information separately apart from the board pack, which is a horrible practice in my opinion. But a better approach is to actually use technology. One particular feature that we're really proud of in Board Pro is if there is an update to your board pack, all of your notes that you have taken on a previous version of board pack gets copied over to your new board pack version. Ah, okay. there, is, there is some algorithmic system we have put in place, which makes sure that your annotations are placed in the right location. So if a paragraph was on page three and now it's on page nine, your notes actually carry over to the right place. And in that way, late copies or board packs that get updated late, they don't lose that context of where those notes should be. So what you're describing there is a way that technology is helping board members stay up with 
late papers that come through without losing any of their previous work. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, another thing that can happen with challenges with technology is in this age of information, it can become easier to actually give a lot of information to the board. I've seen organizations where the executive team want to make sure they're not withholding anything. So they, they give too much information to the board. We have seen in board pro thousand page board packs it's really not possible for a board member to actually consume and meaningfully retain a thousand pages of information. How can technology help with managing this information overload? Zisha? Um, there are a few ways we could, technology can help people. The best or easiest ways are actually search. People are very familiar with Google search. Search is the basic way through which you consume web. Maybe that should be the way you consume all information. So within Board Pro, for example, you can do search by keyword, by name, and your search results are basically not a dead end. They basically tell you where this information is coming from with context. So for example, if you're searching for some financial information that came up in one of those meetings, you search for it, and it shows you the exact context, which meeting it was, what was discussed, the agenda, and the minutes you click on it, and then you are basically seeing the whole context in front of you. So search is a very powerful tool if, if utilized correctly. It's one of those things that we strive on making better over time. Yeah, that's one way we could in, improve access to information. There are new technologies also coming out for improving that. Fuzzy search is another one where you might actually not know the exact word you're looking for. You know what was described. And those tools are fairly new. We're keeping an eye on that trend. How can we integrate fuzzy search and make access to information even more feasible, more accessible? Okay. Thanks, Zishan. Great. Can we have a question from Lorraine Penn? Lorraine asks, is there notification to board members for when there is late reporting changes? I think the question is relating to Board Pro. Yeah, for Board Pro itself, there's the ability for you to send a notification to board members. So after you update a board paper and you're prompted to generate a new version of the board pack, you're given an option, would you like to notify the board? So we leave it very much in the administrator's discretion as to whether or not that is something that needs to be conveyed through to the board. Right, thank you for that. All right, so Danica, how common actually is late reporting? Is it really that common? Uh, yes, certainly in my experience, both late reporting and reports coming through with changes right at the last minute. I would say that in 95% of board packs that I create as an administrator, often wow. financials are the other corporates, the financial yeah. reports are generally the ones that are always the late papers, but you might get something that comes in after the board pack's been published, which timing wise, the board should see and shouldn't wait another month or two or three months until the next board meeting. So it gets squeezed into the board pack for discussion too. Okay. And Danica, can you also talk about just What's involved in like following up on actions with board members or keeping decision interest registers up to date? Action follow-up is without software, it's a very manual process. You need to write down all of the actions that were taken. They should be in the minutes, but then someone needs to actively follow those up themselves. So reach out to every board member and ask them, well, first inform them that they have that action, which hopefully they've noted themselves, but sometimes it's news to them. <laughs> and then follow up. I normally like to do that kind of midway through the board report, board meeting cycle, and then a week before the papers go out again, so you can try and get an update into the action tracker in the board pack. Though often sometimes in the meeting itself is when the actions will be reviewed and people will talk to the progress of where they're at. It's quite hard. And on big, big boards that with a number of independent or non-executive directors, they're often very busy people and they've got their own jobs and they sit on a number of boards and you have to really work to follow up with them because it's not always top of their priority list when they've got lots of different kind of right. plates in the air. Yeah. Yeah. The interest register is, I treat that generally every meeting. So it's included in the meeting pack. We note the interests and the conflicts of interests in the meeting. And at that time, I'll ask anyone if they have any updates to their interests and I'll record them in the minutes and update the interest register at that point in time. So what's it like for an EA or a board secretary who 
perhaps has to chase a board member for something. What what are the dynamics like? Is that simple and straightforward or is it uh, it depends. It depends who you're working with. I've had some people who are very happy to be able to be followed up, some who appreciate the follow up, and then others that treat it as an absolute annoyance and don't like to be bothered. Then there are some that you just can't get a response from email with, and so I'll have to go to go to a text message or even a phone call to try and get any kind of response from them. But it, it really differs person by person. Okay, great. Thank you. And me again? Yes. Yes, Sean. <laughs> we have a question that's coming from Kelly. She's, Kelly asks, is there going to be an update on Board Pro to allow updates to action points? And is there going to be an option to search an action point? Great question, Kelly. So yes, we're actually at the moment on the coming up on our roadmap fairly soon is looking at adding updates for actions. And also another ability for multiple owners of an action item. So those are things that are on our near-term roadmap. And you actually should be able to search an action item already. And Vari is going to, a bit later on in our presentation, do a demonstration of how you can search. And that would include action items as well. We also have a question that's coming from Ashley. She asks, will Board Pro be looking at a meeting recording option to automate minute taking. Yeah, that is actually <laughs> quite interesting. And Dan, you and I have been looking a lot at different tools that are out there right now. Do you want to comment on that? At BoardPro, we think of ourselves as custodians of our customer data. So all these new technologies are coming out around AI where they can do audio transcribe automatically and do some summarization for notes taking. All of those applications actually can retain a copy of all the information that you send to them. So using a third-party AI service provider is something that we are a little bit conservative. We are looking at AI from the perspective of how we can use it as a tool to solve problems and not just jump on a bandwagon and just try to do something new. There are some solutions that we can produce through AI where we don't have to expose our customer data to those third parties. Those are the kind of solutions we will be looking at. We are keeping an eye on this space. But as a comment on the industry, I have seen the results from a few service providers that claim to be doing this. And I, to be honest, I haven't really seen a good quality output from any of them. They are either making mistakes on audio transcription or they're summarizing need too much or not enough. Minute taking is an art. The minute taker has to exactly know what we should be writing down and what are the things that are not necessary. Perhaps it's something that we can address from, from that perspective. Thanks, Tisha. Okay. Thank you. So looking at um, compiling board packs and distributing board information, and security, which you just mentioned, Zishan. You want to comment on sort of the tension between security and, and ease of use? Yeah, security and ease of use are traditionally rivals. If you make something easy to use, it also becomes easy to use for unintended users. One big pet peeve that I have with ease of use and security debate is people have actually been using email as a channel of convenience to send board papers. And when that particular person is no longer part of your organization, all of that information is still in their inbox. And we all have reused password in the past. Remembering new password every time you create a new account is very hard. People reuse passwords. And inevitably, one of those passwords could get leaked and your account can get compromised. All, all those years of documents and information that you have been accumulating in your email is now exposed, is now vulnerable. We have found a middle way where we want to use the convenience of email, but don't want to compromise on security. So what we do in Board Pro is that we use email as a accessible channel for sending out all the notices, notifications, and all those notifications actually just have a link where, which you can click and seamlessly land into our product and start reading your information right away. So in that case, even if your email gets compromised, we can very easily change a password 
on your account in Board Pro, and all of that information is no longer accessible for, from a hacker's point of view. You can continue to search within your email inbox to find something. Once you do, click on a link and then you land in Board Pro. Revoking access to people who are no longer part of your organization is very easy as well. So that's, we are always thinking about convenience when we think about security, but as a rule of principle, we can't compromise on security. Okay, thank you. All right, and so moving on to look at the supporting pain points for supporting governance. Aniki, you provide service to organizations who are perhaps too small to have a full-time board secretary. <clears throat> Or perhaps they've delegated that to maybe the CEO's PA or an administrator in the organization. Just can you talk to us about the effort that's involved in something like, say, compiling a board pack? Absolutely. So this is this is what I do because it is such a pain point. For a monthly board meeting that might be five hours, it would take me 20 hours in that month to do the agenda, get the papers, compile the board pack, attend the meeting, do the minutes and send out the actions and follow up. So it's you look at one meeting and you probably quadruple that in terms of the time that it takes for an administrator per meeting to provide all of those services. Wow. So you're talking about like 80 hours, two weeks of work to support a meeting if you didn't have technology. Correct. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No. So one five hour board meeting in a month would be 20 hours for that month to okay. service that one meeting. Yeah. If I didn't have technology, you could add on at least another five hours of work to have to do all of that technical and manual work. Okay. And talk about how difficult it can be, for example, to keep the interest register up to date. So an interest register is actually a compliance requirement. It's part of the New Zealand Companies Act, the Australian Corporations Act. All organizations need to manage a register of the interests of their board members. Uh, you talked about spending time each meeting to keep it up to date. I think one of the problems when you don't have a single source of truth, like a governance software program, is version control on interest registers. Sometimes there will be multiple copies of an interest register where they'll sit within the compliance team and it might sit within the governance team and then the, the board pack that went out last month will have a copy and you create a new copy and then someone picks up the old copy and I think that's where you run into a lot of problems. Yep. So it's so much easier from an administrative perspective to just have one interest register, which is in something like Board Pro, which everyone has access to, and that's the single source of truth. And every time something's updated, it shows the date that the board was notified. It shows if you end an interest, it shows the date that that interest was ended. So you've still got the historical record of people's conflicts. It just makes life a lot easier. Okay. Brilliant, thank you. What we'd like to do now is actually demonstrate for you one piece of board technology that's available today, and we're unashamedly promoting it, and that's our product board pro. And Vari is now going to actually give you a demonstration of how you can accomplish some of the things that we've talked about today and in the next couple of minutes. So I'll hand it over to you, Vari. All right, so I'm up. Ooh. Cool, can you see Board Pro? Yep. Got it. Awesome. All right, so here is an agenda that I prepared earlier for us. Usually that's like a cake, but this time it's an agenda. So building an agenda and being able to produce a board pack in Board Pro is so easy, which is really great. So building an agenda and adding attachments against each agenda item. So what we'll do is go ahead and produce a board pack from here so that we can see a bit of automation happening, which is awesome. So just like we were saying with being able to push out an email based notification, but not share your sensitive files, you can see that we've got all those options just here as well. So that gave board pro a couple of seconds to pull a board pack all together. So we'll go in and have a look at that. So coming into a board pack we have a feature in Board Pro that's called Board Pro Notes. And this is where you'll find a really live dynamic board pack. 
version control is excellent and this covers that that pain that you just you know that everybody's on the same page when they use board pro to look at their packs as when the board pack is updated everybody gets updated all together so board pro takes your attachments and your agenda and it creates your board pack here you can search keywords within your board pack and it will just bring up your results for you. And you've got your thumbnails so you can really easily go through each of your papers. You can even check them off when you're finished reading them as well. Annotations is the critical part here and this is a really exciting feature. So being able to just really easily use these tools and these are really comfortable tools. Most people have used these on any sort of PDF reader before. You can make little notes to yourself so you can come and refer to these during the meeting as well. And if you were to update that board pack with changes, these annotations would migrate as, as Ishan was explaining earlier as well. So that's an interesting point there, Vari, isn't it? With your annotations that they actually move depending on the version that's being updated. It's quite clever, isn't it? Yeah, it's really special technology. And even being able to just search your annotations, because we were saying you might have a couple of hundred pages in here, you can actually search your annotations as well so that you could just easily find them, click on them and be taken to that part in the board pack as well. So popping out of here, as we were mentioning, Danica's seen 95% of board packs have late editions come into them as well. So being able to go back into your agenda and upload new documents. And if it's the same document with some changes, you can simply re-upload it in here and it would just overwrite the original version so that you've got both versions stored here, but the new one takes its place. And if you've just got new files to add in, late files, you can pop those in as well. And really easily, any sorts of changes, we might add some time. When you close out of here, Board Pro will ask you if you'd like to republish those changes. And doing that just gets everybody again up to speed and on the same page if we republish it like that. So finding information as well is one of those productivity pains. So how do you actually really efficiently use your time and use board pro to find information? Under your documents section here, you've got a section in board pro called meeting documents. And if you search here, this will bring up results of agenda items, document titles, any minutes that you've taken across any meetings, that's notes, decisions, and actions, any between meeting results. So if I search up let's see the word product you can see I've got a couple of different results coming up here so I've got a document title I've got agenda items here and you can also see where these reference to like we were mentioning there's no dead ends here you've got a bit of a snapshot for where these came from and then you'd be able to dive into them just by clicking into them like that and finally, I'm just going to touch on the flying minutes feature as well. So something that is quite a lengthy process is being able to capture circular resolutions. In Board Pro, we call this flying minutes, but both achieve the same thing. And that's being able to make a decision outside of a board meeting for something that can't wait. And this also automates how to capture people's votes, which traditionally is a really long email chain and trying to follow up on directors to get their vote. So in mm -hmm. your account under meetings, you've got a section called between meetings here. And this is a place where you can either set up that vote, like I was just mentioning, and you can also just securely share documents as well, ones that don't need a vote applied to them either. And that means you can really securely share information as well. So under your between meetings, you've got that option to add one or the other. And under this flying minute here, this one is set up and has a voting period. Your board members are all selected by default as well. And this is where good governance is really tied in. So you've got, you've got your settings that you can basically set and forget for making decisions by circular resolution. So when the voting opens, each board member would receive a notification that they've got a window of time to be able to cast their votes. You can see they also get a reminder if they haven't voted. And then at the end of that voting period, the voting will close and the outcome will be calculated for you based on your circular resolution flying minute settings there, which is really awesome. So that's all I was going to show you today.
Um, yeah. Sorry, what sorry. about directors that are on multiple boards? How do they go about interacting with the software to run multiple boards? Yeah, that's really exciting as well, because being able to just have everything in one place, even though the companies are completely separate, is just how we can go about things really well. So in Board Pro, as long as you're always using one email address to be added across different companies, you have a profile that builds up in Board Pro and you can access that under your My Board Pro menu here. So you could switch from your board to committees to other boards really easily and totally separate. And it's just you who has access into them with your email address. Excellent. That's great. Thank you very much for that demonstration, Vari. No worries. And uh, Sean, if somebody wanted a deeper dive into Board Pro, what options are available for them? They can reach out to us, Vari, on our website. There's plenty of places for people to reach out to us on our website, whether they want to have a, an online demo just on their own to, with the automated tools that we have, or they can reach out to our marketing team yeah. and have a one-on-one -on -one demo. Yeah, the best place to start is jump on our website and just click the live chat bubble and we'll point you in the right place. I do have a number of questions that have come through. So Jenny asks, Jenny Nola asks, is there a minimum size for an organization to make Board Pro worthwhile? That's a good question. That's a really good question. We have the answer is it depends. Typically, if your organization has a board with one or two independent board members, that means they're not actually involved in the day-to-day -day running of the operation. A product like Board Pro is just amazing for helping provide that level of reporting and ability to, to communicate with the board. We have had very small, or we do have some very small organizations where it's volunteer organization and nonprofit where the CFO is actually paying for board pro himself because it saves him so much time in producing board materials. On, on the upside, we have a number of large public charities as well that use board pro as well, and you can see many of them across our website. So it really, the answer is it depends. We do offer discounts for nonprofit organizations and small nonprofit organizations can get as much as a 40% discount. We'd be happy to chat with you in more detail about specifics of your organization to see if we think it would be a good fit for you. Thanks, Kim. Jeanette Brooks asks, is there functionality to support an ongoing decision register? one for the board meetings and another for committee meetings. Vari, do you want to handle that question? Oh, sure. And I actually might just jump back into Board Pro to show you that. In Board Pro, when you take the minutes of your meeting, you can record your minutes a few different ways. And one of those ways is to actually record a decision, as many decisions as you want. So when you take the minutes for a meeting, this is the meeting we were looking at. When you take minutes, you have notes, decisions, and actions. Every time you use the decision, this is automatically fed into your decision register, which is found in this section here. And you can search through these. You have a date field, which you can use to search, or you have a search keyword search here as well, so that you can always find these. These are separated between your board and committees in the committee accounts as well. Brilliant. And so... Committees have a separate account in Board Pro, is that correct? That's right. Yeah. So it's a sub account that branches off from the board and that can have different people to the board and obviously has its own decision register, meeting list, documents and everything. Uh, yep. We have a question that's come in from Gary Kelk. Gary asks, how long does Board Pro retain documents if subscribed and how long if unsubscribed? He's thinking about the seven-year requirements with the IRD, so you can access old documents if they're no longer required. Can you export, can you export history and documents from Board Pro? Okay, so the answer is, so Board Pro holds on to the information as long as you have an active account. So there is no automatic archiving after seven years for active customers. When you leave Board Pro, you have the ability to go in and, and remove things and items like the meeting section where Vari is demonstrated can make those easier or Board Pro can support you with that if required. Otherwise, you can park your account and if you came back years later or you needed to access a document from years past, we can reactivate your account for a period of time so you can come in and access the document. 
The next question, oh, sorry, it just disappeared. Oh, oh, I just answered it, but I can read it out if you like. Yeah, go ahead. I'm, no I'm interested in your answer. Oh, so Joe Johnson asked if there is somewhere where they can do an in-camera session, excluding executives from seeing information. And your answer, Rari? And the answer was? <laughs> no. <laughs> we don't have a feature for in-camera sessions or board-only sessions right now, although we have had plenty of feedback about it. It's something that our customers would like to see as a new feature and something we would definitely be keen to develop. Just have to prioritize um, it. Can I talk to that one? Because I've just had this exact example of one of the companies I work for where I've implemented Board Pro. We, so... If we want to have documents that only directors can see, that executives can't, we put them into the governance document section and link to those from the meeting pack. And within the governance documents, we say that only directors have access to see those documents. Mm. And so then when the board pack's created, executives can't actually access those documents themselves, but directors can. And at that point in the meeting, we'd say directors only time or in camera, and the executives would leave the meeting. The directors would only be in the room or online, and they'd be able to review those documents at that point. Brilliant. Thanks, Danica. No worries. Let me move along to our last slide in the deck. Kim, oh, back to you. So we just wanted to look at some of the emerging trends in both governance and, and technology. And Danica, how often are you coming across ESG conversations around the board table? All the time. <laughs> and in different iterations of it, ESG, CRD, which is your climate-related disclosures, customer conduct. Yeah, it's part of conversations I'm seeing everywhere. And it's top of mind. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and going along together with that is like we're seeing enhanced stakeholder engagement within requirements coming on board. Stakeholders are more interested in holding boards accountable for delivering the, not just the purpose of the organization, but doing so in ways that are ethical. Yes, absolutely. And you're seeing that in the financial industry from a lot of the regulators too. So the FMA and RBNZ are putting requirements into, onto boards around their, their, we've got the COFI, the Conduct of Financial Institutions, the Financial Market Conduct Act, IPSO, all of them, all of those bodies have different requirements in terms of what their expectations are around good customer conduct, around your sustainability, around your climate-related disclosures, et cetera. But also, I think, customers as well depending where you are and shareholders too are starting to put pressure on boards to 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 comply uh, yep. Kim do you mind just making a comment or actually Zishan or yourself might want to make this comment just on the last slide around our AI like AI is obviously huge in the marketplace around the world what's board pros position in relation to AI where do we sit there I can, I can take that question. I can take that question. Our opinion on any technology, whether it's AI or any other type of technology, is that we should use it as a tool. So customers' problems come first. We have to figure out what are the problems we're trying to solve and then see if AI is the right technology for it. And in terms of using the state-of-the-art AI technology, such as ChatGPT or GPT-4, there is a big constraint, a big question mark on them. ChatGPT OpenAI is, has publicly made a disclosure. They are keeping a copy of everything that you send their way. The information that you send through ChatGPT interface, there are even disclosures that they're going to use it for retraining their future models. The information that you send them through the API will not be used for training, but it will be kept for the safety purpose, just to make sure that their safety requirements are fulfilled. In such a case, it will be a big problem for companies like us who deal with hosting confidential information to use those kind of technologies. But there are other technologies that do not require customer data and they are using AI. We are keeping an eye on them. We are actively experimenting with some of those technologies. But for us, customer data security comes at a high priority. We actually have a dedicated seminar coming up on May 11th, the role of AI in governance. So if you're interested in that topic, I welcome you all to join that webinar and hear more from us. Thanks, Zeeshan. 
So that sort of brings us to the end of things. So please feel free to connect with any of our presenters today on LinkedIn. I'm sure they'll look forward to your connection. And if you'd like to be put in touch with Kim, Zeeshan, or Danika, you can do so by indicating your interest at the end of the survey of the webinar as you exit. Now, I'll draw your attention to two webinars coming up. The one on May 4th is going to be a really interesting webinar with Raylene Castle, who is the ex-CEO of Rugby Australia. You'll recall the, let's call it a crisis they had with one of their rugby players who was kicked out of the organization. And Raylene's going to be talking us through that whole process and how she handled that crisis while managing her board and stakeholders. And then on May 11th, as Zishan said, we've got a really exciting webinar coming up with a chap by the name of Steve Norrie, who is an AI evangelist around the world. He has 1.4 million followers, and he is the guru on AI. So that'll be a really interesting topic. So very shortly from us, you'll receive an email which will include a video of today's webinar and the presentation slides. And as I mentioned before, for those that are still here, which there are a few, we have a special offer for you. So as you leave the webinar, don't forget to complete the one minute survey and go into the draw to win our beautiful gift hamper worth $400. I think I'll announce the winner of that tomorrow. Uh, so thanks everybody for attending. I hope you enjoyed our session. Thank you, Kim, for leading the session. Zeeshan. Thanks, Sean. Bari and Danika for your great conversations today. And we look forward to seeing you at our next webinar on May 4th. So thanks, everybody. Have a great day.